Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CodeCast Podcast today. My name is Terry Fletcher. I hope everyone is having a good summer so far. Uh, Today, I want to revisit a topic that I actually haven't talked about since 2020. I can't believe it's been four years on the podcast since I've really talked about preventative health and office visits on the same day. And I know that's always a controversial topic because there are rules for E&M services. Obviously, we've got 25 modifier issues and triggers. And then we have preventative service um, definitions that the CPT puts out. And I think a lot of people are trying to use those two services on the same date, sometimes in reverse. What I mean by that is, for example, if somebody comes in for their well check or the preventative visit or to establish care, and then just because the physician says, okay, let's refill your prescriptions, they think that is another um, office visit. Now, it might or might not be, but it's not blanket statement. Also, I find that when somebody comes in for an office visit and they say, why I'm here, can you do my well check? If it's not an annual well visit for Medicare, that is not an exam, then you can't do it. So, and I'll explain why, because there's, there's a lot of things that work one way, but you can't have it work the other way if there's different intent to the encounter. And we want to be clear because whenever you bill two services, There's a couple of things that happen. First of all, when patients are coming in for a well check or preventative service, typically their coverage does not include any share of cost or out of pocket for them. So when you add an office visit to that, now they have a copay and the patients are like, wait a minute, or if they haven't met their deductible, it could automatically be applied to their deductible. And they're thinking, I came in for a well check and just because I had, you know, a question that was just a question, not a complaint that you had to address and treat and and work up. Why am I getting now charged and out of pocket? And so you have to be really careful as far as where is the line from preventative and then problem oriented visits. And I'm, I'm hoping to give you a little bit of insight here. I also have a full Um, webinar dedicated to this and so let me just give you some insight and hopefully this will help you for those of you that do charge these kinds of services but first I also want to say uh, thank you to Decision Health who's sponsoring the episode today join Decision Health this November for the advanced specialty coding virtual summits dive into orthopedics pain management and anesthesia specialties and get the latest guidance for accurate coding billing and compliance Visit codingbooks.com forward slash events to register and save $50 with the coupon code ASC2024. Okay, we always appreciate our sponsors. We have lots of them, so it's always nice. Okay, so let's talk about preventative medicine services. So preventative medicine, okay, we know these are age-based codes and they're again, I'm not talking about annual well visits right now. I'm just talking about preventative medicine, established care you know, just basically risk factor adjustments. And they're used to report preventative medicine evaluation and management of uh, infants and children, so our, so kids, adolescents, and adults. And it really is a focus on what is age appropriate for that patient. And when you look at the codes, the codes start for new patients, 99381 all the way to 99387, and established patients, 99391 to 99397. So when you look at your CPT, and I'm in the professional edition, page 35, there are a couple of paragraphs that I just want you to keep close attention to when you have to explain to your physician why you didn't report also an office visit at the same time. And I'll give you some examples where I would think would be your best practices if you are going to report both. So one of the things it says, and this is in the third paragraph, and I'm quoting, it says, if an abnormality is encountered, or a pre-existing problem is addressed in the process of performing this preventative medicine evaluation and management service, and this is the big thing, and if the problem or abnormality is significant enough to require additional work to perform the key components of a problem-oriented evaluation and management service, then the appropriate office visit codes, and they say 99202 to 215, could also be reported. 
Modifier 25 should be added to the office visit code to indicate that a significant separately identifiable evaluation and management service was provided on the same day as a preventative medicine service. The appropriate preventative medicine service is additionally reported. And then it goes on to say, next paragraph, an insignificant or trivial problem abnormality that is encountered in the process of performing the preventative medicine evaluation and management service and which does not require additional work and the performance of key components of a problem-oriented E&M service should not be reported. So the one thing that is really kind of important here is it's not just about the fact that if you address a problem, it also says if the problem is significant enough or if their abnormality is significant enough, and it says it twice. So when I mentioned if you're, you know, during a preventative service, you're at your quarterly, can you please you know, refill my medication, that's not necessarily something that you can have another e &M service. Just because the patient has chronic conditions, if they're fine and there's no problem and there's nothing to, and I'm air quoting, address, and it's not significant enough, there's no abnormality, there's no adjusting of medications because of something, again, that was a new problem or an exacerbated problem or something that the patient was concerned. Maybe they were getting different hypertension reads at home, so the medication had to be adjusted. If none of that's happening and you're just, let's say, refilling scripts or there was just a question the doctor quickly answered, that's not significant. And so an example would be the patient's there for their preventative medicine service, everything is, you know, gone through, got a checklist, age appropriate. There's a comprehensive history and exam. Remember, comprehensive history exam is necessary for preventative medicine. And it also includes uh, counseling, anticipatory risk guidance factor reductions, interventions. It also includes ordering, you know, labs. Do we want to look at their metabolic panel, their A1C, their cholesterol, um, any kind of ordering of diagnostic procedures? That is not considered another visit. That just means you're trying to get baseline because this patient's establishing care or coming in for preventative just because maybe it's age appropriate. Remember, these are age-based codes. But let's say that all happened, and then all of a sudden the patient, well, I shouldn't say all of a sudden, but let's say then during this conversation or during this exam, um, the doctor finds a breast mass or a lump under the patient's right arm and says, okay, feel this right here. And the patient feels it and says, you know, that's a concern. I'm finding a, a small hard mass there. We actually need to get this looked at. We need a diagnosis and get a mammogram, um, potentially a biopsy. I'm a little concerned. When's the last time you've had a mammogram? And then this comes into a bigger workup. And that problem is now addressed because now it's a problem. It's a concern. It's a consideration. It's an undiagnosed situation where the doctor's like, uh-oh, we need to deal with something. Or let's go back to the medication issue. Let's say the patient is there for their preventative they're doing great, you know, no problems. They're just like, yeah, doc, you know, it's great, whether they be established or new. They haven't seen the doctor really in a couple of years. So let's just say they're established. It hasn't been quite three years. And during that visit, um, the patient says, you know, I'm starting to get some numbness in my right hand, and I'm not sure why. And my right index finger goes numb quite a bit when I'm writing or whatever. And the doctor then does a brief exam, checks it out, and says, okay. And the patient says, ow, that hurts when they press on a certain area and says, you know what, um, I'm going to have this further looked at either by a neurologist or, um, a, you know, orthopedic surgeon or some kind of specialist. And they say, now, when it goes numb, can you feel it all? I say, no, it go, you know, the patient's responding because they're doing a workup on that extremity. That may be maybe a 99213. Um, and let's say that, and I would actually probably consider the breast mass maybe a 99214, just depending on what you did. And then let's say that it'll take another one. Um, that wasn't medicine, but on, on the thumb, I was just kind of, I went in a different direction, but let's talk about medicine. So let's say that they're, they just got their refills and they say, you know what, I'm starting to get, and this is something I can totally relate to. I'm taking my lisinopril and for blood pressure, and I'm finding that um, I'm getting this dry cough with that. It, I don't know if it is a side effect of the medication or what, but it's all the time. And I'm not sure I'm having to to, you know, take sugar-free uh, hard candy just to get it to go away when all of a sudden it creeps up on me. And that is actually a side effect of that medicine. And so the doctor says, well, you know what, maybe we need to adjust that off. And the, and the uh, patient also says, and at home, I'm also finding that my blood pressure is actually hovering around 150 over 90 when 
when you had me on the different medication, I was closer to, you know, 138 over um, 80. And so the doctor says, okay, I'm glad you let me know because I want you to take some readings at home. We're going to continue to do that for a month. I'm going to adjust your medication to something different. And they, you know, give them a different medication. Is that now an ENM code? I would say yes, in addition to the uh, preventative. Now here's where it wouldn't be. So let's say that they just did a they just got their meds uh, refilled and, or the doctor's doing it at this preventative visit and they said any problems any concerns or anything nope I'm good okay you haven't any you know uh, things you haven't had before any headaches anything like that nope I'm good have you how are you doing on your exercise and your diet I have adjusted what you said I stopped eating ice cream five times a week now I only have it once a week <laughs> I'm kidding but I'm just saying um, you know and things like that and, and we're telling the patient now have you you know really cut back on smoking or have you stopped or you know when they talk about those are risk factor reductions those are not problems you're addressing those are things to you know kind of get the patient um, healthier showing a healthier life um, really getting them to understand they need to move you know what if they can't tolerate walking what are you doing to to move a little bit do you have you know options for maybe a swimming pool or can you sit on a chair and and you know maybe hold maybe two pound weights or something you know I'm, I'm going by what when I shadow physicians what they talk about and before when I used to be a clinician and so you know those kinds of things all part of preventative unless there is an abnormality that you have to work up or if there is an exacerbation of existing conditions something that wouldn't be part of that preventative service. And the last thing I'm going to say is let's say a patient's coming in and they're coming in for their six month check for medicines. They, let's say they had a stroke a year ago and they're doing fine, but they just want to check. They had a weakened right side. I want to see how they're doing. They're still, you know, under uh, active care of that physician. They're saying, yeah, I'm doing okay, but you know, I still feel I need my cane for balance. Um, my medicines, I'm taking them, it's fine. I haven't had any issues. Uh, I'm still dealing with memory issues. So see, that's, that's still a problem-oriented visit. But the patient during that visit says, hey, can we go ahead and just do a well check just to see everything else? You need to reschedule that. Or if you do it at the same time, it's free. Because nothing in the CPT book, nothing with AMA, nothing with Medicare, unless it's an annual well check for a Medicare patient, which is just an inventory checklist. Look online. You can Google it. You can even find it on my website. Um, just make sure you know that there is not a sick appointment that leads to a well check. Patient's not coming in well. So you can't reverse it. If they're coming in well, they're getting the preventative, and then something's found, now you may be able to capture that office visit. So be really careful with that because I see so many times where people try to do that in reverse, and that's what I mean. It doesn't happen in reverse that way. So you, you have to be cautious with that. So it's kind of like when I say, you know, all coders are billers, but not all billers are coders. And I'm sure a lot of you know what I mean by that. If you're a coder, don't you want to know if it gets paid? If you're a hospital coder, you never know. But if you're a professional coder, you want to know if what you're doing is getting paid. And so you may check in with the billers. You may look at payment policy. I'm hoping if you're a certified coder, you're keeping up on all that. But if you are a biller, you may not know the codes. You, you may be only in the collection mode, but you know who your coders are to go to. It doesn't work in reverse. And so it's the same concept here. And I just want to make sure that if you are split billing, and this isn't shared billing, let's not look at that, it's split billing. If you're doing that, primary care, or if you're a specialty that also deals in primary care, let's say you're a primary care cardiologist or primary care internal medicine, then this is an important concept for you because it's, a, it's an OIG work plan issue, it's also a payer issue, and it's also a patient issue. Because patients expect when they come in for a well check that they don't have a share of cost or out of pocket. And as soon as you start adding services to that, you are now giving them um, an expense and it better be warranted, medically necessary and worth it. And the last thing I'll say on this, and this is not good, I actually brought it up in a um, Compliance Guy Roundtable podcast that I'm sure some of you listen to that or watch. Um, we do that every Monday. Um, and there's five of us, six of us on the panel. And this came up recently in an audit I did for a payer where the doctor actually put in the note, well, we're going to say that you had an ele elevated blood pressure today so I can go ahead and add on the office visit. And I was like, oh my gosh, you didn't really say that. It was actually in the note. Please don't be doing that stuff. That's not okay. 
So just, you know, if you do things correctly, you will get the reimbursement you deserve. As soon as you start to try to be creative or cute about things or get around things, that's when everything can fall off the rails and go wrong for you. And I, I just don't want that for anyone. We want to make sure we are compliant, we are truthful, we are honest, we are medically necessary, and we are accurate in our coding, billing, and reporting. Okay, so personal tidbit. Hope everyone again had a good 4th of July. I have a couple of um, fun birthday parties for friends coming up, but my 25th wedding anniversary is coming up next week. And so on the 24th, so just a shout out to my husband, Tom, um, 25 years. I'm pretty excited about that. And um, we're going to Hawaii in October. We actually go once a year. We didn't go last year, but we go, we've been going once a year for a while. I used to speak at the AAPC Hawaii, but they stopped doing um their conferences out there after uh, before after COVID because it just got too expensive for them. But we kept up our tradition of, of still going out there and spending a week. So we're excited about that. So anyway, I will talk to everyone soon. Make it a great rest of your week. Make it a great day. And thank you for listening to the CodeCast podcast. For more information on medical coding, billing, auditing, and compliance, including how to hire Terry, follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website, at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma. Music producer Assassin Music. <laughs>